Greetings, fellow gorehounds, and welcome back to a blood splattered vlog. I'm the horror guru, and today I'm going to talk about Dr. Sleep. Now, Dr. Sleep, for those of you who aren't aware, is the highly anticipated sequel to Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of The Shining, which, needless to say, is one of the greatest horror films of all fucking time. So this movie has some pretty big ass shoes to fill. Thankfully, though, they found a really great filmmaker in Mike Flanagan to adapt Stephen King's book and to make it work with Stanley Kubrick's film, which, for those of you who don't know, was very different from Stephen King's original novel. With Mike Flanagan being the filmmaker behind such films as Absentia, Oculus, Hush, Gerald's Game, and The Haunting of Hill House Netflix series, a pretty prolific horror filmmaker in his own right. And I am very happy to report that Mr. Flanagan knocked this movie out of the goddamn park. Not only does it work as an adaptation of Stephen King's book, it also 100% works as a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's film. And while I would argue this movie isn't as terrifying as Stanley Kubrick's film, it's still got some pretty scary bits and it continues the story in a way that is very satisfying. Because I don't know about the rest of you, but I always wondered what happened to Danny Torrance after the events of the film, because I can't imagine your father going on a killing spree and then trying to kill you. I can't imagine that wouldn't have left some pretty deep fucking scars and that you're not going to live happily ever after after that. Not to mention the fact that you have to live with that on top of having some psychic superpowers that connect you immediately with the, you know, the afterlife with death. You can see beyond death, so you can probably see like shit like your dead father and all that. And thankfully, with this film, I get all those questions answered and way more. That's not to say I don't have criticisms of this movie. I do have some, but let it be clear that my praise of this movie vastly overweighs my criticisms. But before we get to those, let's first talk about the things that I absolutely loved about this film. First off, the casting of this movie is pitch fucking perfect. Everyone from the people who are recreating characters from the original movie in the flashbacks, as well as older Danny Torrance played by Ian McGregor to Rebecca Ferguson playing Rose the Hat, the new antagonist of the film. All of them do a phenomenal job, especially the people who are trying to recreate the performances of the original movie. Because this movie does something interesting where for all the flashbacks to the original movie, they don't use footage from that movie. They recreated it themselves using their own actors. And it makes sense when you watch the movie why they did it that way, because they're not only using scenes that happen directly in the movie. They also have flashbacks to scenes that were around that period of time, but not specifically in the final film. And had they created those scenes on top of having actual clips from the original movie, I feel like it would have made this weird disconnect between all the characters. So I'm glad that they went the whole full recreation route. It works 100 percent, which leads me to the second thing I really love about this movie, the expansion of the lore of the original film. Now, granted, a lot of this expansion is merely using stuff that was in the books that was never put in the original film and just putting that in the sequel so that now it's canon. And I actually really applaud them for doing that because now I can have my cake and eat it too because I love that original movie and I think it's perfect as it is, but it's definitely not like a faithful adaptation of that book. And there's a lot of stuff in that book that I really love that I wish they had kept. And now it's canon in the sequel, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can have the original movie and have all that lore. And the third thing I really like about this movie is the main antagonist, Rose the Hat, who is just... A phenomenal villain all around and definitely up there with some of the best Stephen King villains ever written. And I thought the way they adapted her into this movie was just great. She was menacing. She was kind of fun, kind of sexy and just overall just a treat to watch. And you could tell that the actress was having a blast playing her. And that's always a treat. And the fourth thing I really like about this movie, which is going to sound weird, given what I said earlier, um, I really like the scares in this film, even though admittedly, they're not as scary as the original film. And Mike Flanagan had a really difficult tightrope to walk while making this film for a number of reasons, not the least of which being that it's a very different story than The Shining. The Shining is a haunted house tale, so it's going to have a lot of spooky ghosts and a lot of scary moments like that. This is a very different film. And while there are ghosts and spooky shit like that, it's not as prevalent as it is in the original story. And I thought that Fl Mike Flanagan found a really good balance with his adaptation of having scares to non-scares. And um, I got to commend him for not letting the enormity of the project 
overpower that. And the fifth thing I absolutely love about this film is the restraint that Mike Flanagan showed in making it. Because you see, while the film is filled with a lot of really fun Easter eggs, he didn't overload it with fan service, which I was kind of worried he was going to do. Instead, he made sure to save the fan service moments for very particular points in the film in which it would be most emotionally impactful, stuff like the original Shining theme, for example. And now with all that out of the way, let me talk about some of my criticisms of the film. The first one you've already heard, and that's that while it's scary, it's definitely not as scary as the original film. And granted, when I saw the original film, I was a little kid, so maybe if I was a little kid going into this film, I'd feel differently, but because I'm not, I don't know for sure. I do know that my girlfriend was scared shitless while watching it, so hey, I might not be the best gauge. I might be a little bit desensitized. So just keep that in mind. And my second criticism of the movie is there is a portion of this film, especially in the first half, that I don't think was entirely necessary to the plot of the film and probably could have been left on the cutting room floor, um, especially the way that part of the movie, that subplot, if you want to call it that, the way it ends and the abrupt way it ends just kind of felt like, OK, then why did we go through all that beforehand? It just it didn't seem entirely necessary, at least to me. And my third criticism of the movie is probably the biggest one, and that's this. I kind of wanted the main villain to do more horrifying shit, if that makes sense. Like, at the very beginning of the movie, they do some pretty fucked up shit, and about halfway into the movie, it feels like the heroes just start winning, and I kind of wanted them to suffer like a really big loss. And on paper, they do suffer a really big loss, especially at the halfway point. But some of it isn't on screen. And I kind of wanted it to be on screen because I feel like I would feel the menace of the villains way more if it was on screen. And I'm kind of vaguing my way around this because I really don't want to spoil shit. So I'll save my elaboration of this criticism for the spoiler section. So you can just wait for that. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, despite my three criticisms, I 100% recommend this film. If you're a Stephen King fan, if you're a fan of the original film, if you just like horror movies in general and kind of want to see one that's pretty good in theaters, then you should definitely see Dr. Sleep. And I honestly can't remember if any animals died in this movie, but there are some dead kids. So uh, be warned about that. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us finally move on to the spoilers. All right, so now that we're in the spoiler section, I can finally elaborate on some of the criticisms I had of this movie, so let me go into those. So earlier I mentioned there was a part of this film that I wasn't sure was entirely necessary to the story, and that's that at the beginning of this film, um, just to give you a bit of a rundown if you haven't seen it yet, basically you have Danny Torrance, who is now an old man, and he's helping this young girl who's being stalked and chased by these weird vampire people that feed essentially on uh, people with The Shining. In particular, they feed on kids with The Shining. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's the basic plot of this film. And the part of this movie that I wasn't sure was entirely necessary to this film is that at the beginning of this movie, we see as the crew of vampires, as they find someone with this really powerful shining ability and they recruit her into their crew of vampire people. They basically convert her into one of them with the idea being they really like her power set and wanted to use her powers to lure more kids. And here's the thing. I actually really love these scenes. I really love the way they play out. And I thought that the introduction to the characters, I got to know them a little better. But I had this one big problem with it. And that's that these scenes get us to know a character who almost immediately dies when they confront the hero later. So there was almost no point in going into this elaborate backstory for her because the scene with him, with Danny and her is so brief as to feel like, well, that could have just been a nameless henchwoman. You didn't really need to do this whole elaborate story of how she got hooked into the vampire crew if she was just going to go out like that. Which leads to my second criticism, the one about how I really wanted to see these villains doing more horrifying shit. And what that really comes down to is that about halfway into this movie, while we did have one really awesome scene of them killing this one kid, the menace of the villains kind of goes away because once Danny starts confronting these villains, 
he starts besting them one after another really fucking easily. And while he does lose a friend at one point and the little girl loses her father, the friend thing happens so quickly and you kind of wanted to feel the impact of that a little more. And the father happens off screen. And I really wish that was on screen because I feel like if we got to see as one of the crew stalks and kills her father in front of her, we would probably feel the menace a little more of these villains. And I just kind of wanted more scenes like the scene where they killed the little kid. Like, I wish they had a higher body count that we could see tangibly on the screen, just so that by the time Danny actually does confront them, like we really are worried shitless for him because them killing one kid doesn't necessarily mean they're going to kill an adult man with shining powers. Um, and the movie kind of proves that, um, no, they don't. They kill his friend, though, which I did like that. And so it's I'm kind of mixed on this criticism because while I do have the criticism, I do acknowledge that they do do some awful shit throughout this film. And Danny does face some consequences of this. He does lose some things. But I just feel like I feel like it comes a little too easy, if that makes sense. Um, just like like some more like a couple really big setbacks would have just been all I needed. But I don't know. Even as I'm sitting here criticizing the movie, I'm thinking about the setbacks they do have in the movie. And I'm kind of going back and forth on it. So maybe a second viewing's in order just to see if I still feel the same way. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, if you want to know more about what happens in this movie, you're going to have to see it for yourself. It is currently in theaters. Um, at some point, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the description below when it actually hits Amazon. Um, that's obviously not going to be right away. So don't go looking for it right now. And uh, I guess it's time for you all to like, comment and subscribe and uh, be sure to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And uh, be sure to check out my Patreon page. And if you decide to go the Patreon route, remember that even a dollar a month can go a long way. And with that said, my fellow Gorehounds, I'm going to go uh, work on some more catch up vlogs because there's a lot of movies I saw this year that I never vlogged. And uh, my channel could use some content, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Peace out, my fellow Gorehounds, and I'll catch y'all later.